Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back on this study that we were already starting, I think it's a couple of months ago, but I come back to move further on this. Holy in Christ. I think we did some six chapters with this. And now I'm going to talk about holiness and crucifixion. This is your Pastor Yadi. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. John 17 verse 19. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Hebrews 10, 9 to 10 and verse 14. <coughs> So maybe you can pick up the the last study we stopped and maybe it makes it easier to follow again. It was in his high priestly prayer on his way to Gethsemane on Calvary that Jesus spoke this to the Father. I sanctify myself. He had not long before spoken of himself as the Son whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world. John 10, 36. From the language of Holy Scripture, we are familiar with the thoughts that what God has sanctified, man has to sanctify too. The work of the Father in sanctifying the Son as the basis and groundwork of the work of the Son in sanctifying himself. If his holiness as a man was to be a free and personal possession, accepted and assimilated in voluntary and conscious self-determination, it was not enough that the Father sanctify him. He must sanctify himself too. This self-sanctifying of our Lord found place through his whole life, but culminates and comes out in the special distinctness in his crucifixion. What it consists of is made clear by the words from the epistle or the letter to the Hebrews. The Messiah said, Behold, I have come to do your will. Hebrews 10 verse 9. And then it was added, By that will we have been sanctified through the offerings of the body of Jesus Christ. In the same letter, 10 verse 10. It was the offering of the body of Christ that was the will of God. And in doing that will, he sanctified us. It was of the doing that will in the offering his body that he said, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. The giving up of his will, the God's will in the agony of Gethsemane, and then the doing of that will in the obedience to the point of that. This was Christ sanctifying himself and us too. Let us try to understand this. The holiness of God is revealed in his will. Holiness even in the divine being has no moral value except as it is freely willed. In speaking of Trinity, theologians have pointed out how as the Father represents the absolute necessity of everlasting goodness. The Son proves its liberty within the divine being it is willed in love. And this now was the work of the Son on earth, amid the trials and temptations of a human life, 
to accept and hold firmly at any sacrifice with his whole heart to desire the will of the Father. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience in that he suffered. Hebrews 5 verse 8. In Gethsemane, the conflict between the will of human nature and the divine will reached its height and manifests itself in language that almost makes us tremble at his sinlessness as he speaks of his will in antithesis to God's will. But the struggle is a victory because in presence of the clearest consciousness of what it means to have his own will, he gives it up and says, Your will be done. Matthew 26, 42 to enter into the will of God, he gives up his very life. In his crucifixion, he thus reveals the law of sanctification. Holiness is the full entrance of our will into God's will. Or rather, holiness is the entrance of God's will to be the death of our will. The only end of our will and deliverance from it is death to it under the righteous judgment of God. It was in the surrender to the death of the cross that Christ sanctified himself and sanctified us so that we also might be sanctified in truth. This giving up is will by God's will in the agony of Gethsemane and then the doing of that will in the obedience to the point of death. This was Christ sanctifying himself and us too. And now just as the Father sanctify him, and he in virtue thereof appropriate it and sanctified himself, so we, whom he has sanctified, have to appropriate it to ourselves. In no other way than crucifixion, the giving up of himself to the dead, could Christ realize the sanctification he had from the Father. And in no other way can we realize the sanctification we have in him. His own and our sanctification bears the common stamps of the cross. We have seen before that obedience is the path to holiness. In Christ we see that the path to perfect holiness is perfect obedience and that is obedience to the point of that, even to the giving up of life, even the death of the cross. As a sanctification that Christ accomplished for us, even to the point of the offering of his body, bears the dead mark, we cannot partake of it, we cannot enter it, unless we die to self and its will. Crucifixion is the path to sanctification. This lesson is in harmony with all we have seen. The first revelation of God's holiness to Moses was a companion with the command, put off, Exodus 3, verse 5. God's praises as glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, was sounded over the dead bodies over the Egyptians. When Moses on Sinai was commanded to sanctify the mount, it was said, whoever touches the mountain, whether man or beast, he shall not live, Exodus 19, 12 and 13. The holiness of God is that to all that is in contact with sin. Only through that, through blood shedding, was there access to the holiest of all. Christ chose that, even that as a curse, so that he might sanctify himself for us and open to us the path to holiness, to the holiest of all, to the Holy One. And so it is still. No man can see God and live. Exodus 33.20 It is only in that, the death of self and of nature, that we can draw near and behold God. God led the way. No man can see God and live. Then let me die, Lord. One has cried, but see you I must. Yes, blessed be God, so real is our interest in Christ and our union to him that we may live in his death, as day by day 
Self is kept in the place of death. The life and the holiness of Christ can be ours. And where is the place of death? And how can the crucifixion that leads to holiness and to God be accomplished in us? Thank God, it is no work of our own, no weary process of self-crucifixion. The crucifixion that is to sanctify us is an accomplished fact. The cross barriers the banner. It is finished, John 19.30. And on it Christ sanctified himself for us so that we might be sanctified in truth. Our crucifixion as our sanctification is something that in Christ has been completely and perfectly finished. We have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hebrews 10 verse 10 By one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Hebrews 10 verse 14. In the fullness with it is the Father's good pleasure should dwell in Christ, the crucifixion of our old man of the flesh of the world of ourselves is all a spiritual reality. He who desires and knows and accepts Christ fully receives all this in him. And as the Christ, who had previously been known more in his pardoning, quickening, and saving grace, is gained soft after as a real deliverer from the power of sin, as a sanctifier. He comes and takes up the soul into the fellowship of the sacrifice of his will. He put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 9.26 must become true of us as it is of him. He reveals how it is a part of his salvation to make us partakers of a will entirely giving up to the will of God, of a life that has yielded itself to the death and has then been given back from the dead by the power of God. A life of which the crucifixion of self-will was the spirit and the power. He reveals his and the soul that sees it, consents to it, yields it will and its life and believes in Jesus as its death and its life and in his crucifixion as its possession and its inheritance enters into the enjoyment and experience of it. The language is now, I died that I might live. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer who who live, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2, 19, verse 20. 19, I mean, verse 19 and verse 20. And the life it now lives is by faith on the Son of God, the daily acceptance and faith of him who lives within us in the power of death that has been passed through and forever finished. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I have come to do your will, O God. By that will, the will of God, accomplished by Christ, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ. Let us understand and hold it firmly, Christ giving up his will in Gethsemane and accepting God's will in dying. Christ doing that will in the obedience to the death of the cross. This is his sanctifying himself, and this is our being sanctified in truth. By that will we have been sanctified. The death to self, the utter and most absolute giving up of our own life, with its will and its power and its aims, to the cross and into the crucifixion of Christ, the daily bearing the cross, not a cross on which we are yet to be crucified, but the cross of the crucified Christ in its power to kill and to make dead. This is the secret of the life of holiness. This is true sanctification.
Let me give you some further thoughts. First, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 16, 24. Jesus means that our life shall be exact counterpart of his, including even the crucifixion. The beginning of such a life is the denial of self to give Christ its place. The Jews would not deny self, but denied the Holy One and killed the Prince of Life. Acts 3.14-15 to The choice is still between Christ and self. Let us deny the unholy one and give him to the dead. Second, what are the steps of fully denying self? First, the deliberation decision that self shall be giving up to the dead. Then, the surrender to Christ crucified to make us partakers of his crucifixion. Then, knowing that our old man was crucified. Romans 6 verse 6. The faith that says, I am crucified with Christ, and then the power to live as a crucified one to glory in the cross of Christ. 3. How can you daily maintain true of self-denial, self-crucifixion? This is God's way of holiness, a divine mystery, which the Holy Spirit alone can daily maintain in us. Blessed be God, it is the life a Christian can live because Christ lives in us. 4. The central thought is, we are in Christ, who gave up his will and did the will of God. By the Holy Spirit, the mind that was in him is in us. The will of self is crucified, and we live in the will of God. Let us pray. Holy Father, I bless you for this precious blessed word, for this precious blessed work of your beloved Son. In his never-ceasing intercession, you always hear the wonderful prayer, For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Blessed Father, I ask you to strengthen me mightily by your Spirit, so that in living faith I may be able to accept and live the holiness prepared for me in my Lord Jesus. Give me spiritual understanding to know what it means that he sanctified himself, that my sanctification is secured in his, that as by faith I abide in him, its power will cover my whole life. Let his sanctification indeed be the law as it is the life of mine. Let this surrender to your fatherly will is continually dependence and obedience be its root and its strength. Let this death to the world and the sin be its daily rule. Above all, let himself, O my Father, let himself, as sanctified for me, the living Jesus, be my only trust and support. He sanctified himself for me so that I myself also may sanctify it in truth. Beloved Savior, how shall I richly bless and love and glorify you for this wondrous grace? You gave yourself so that now I am holy in you. I gave myself so that in you I myself may be made holy in truth. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. My dear ones, you have enough food for thoughts, right? You are so precious, so precious, so desired by God. Reflect and study what you just heard. And the prayer, as I prayed, may it be your prayer. May the Holy Spirit guide you and give you wisdom and insight. God bless. Bye.